so let's see so you know i have been looking at and uh, for last 4 uh, 5 hours and i have seen that very few people are asking questions and uh, in fact the um, the motive of the you know the uh, in, right in the beginning um and not not really because you are doing summer internship but uh, when it comes to have have some group activity or some sort of you know uh, discussion building type of uh, you know environment you need to put in some efforts so that you can you know you can make others who have not asked question they can participate and then it becomes very interesting so this has not happened i felt i was wrong but now i am right today these are my what is it outline so i would i would ask what is summer internship see anybody can answer you have come here for summer internship i think you are the best people to know i mean you know why you have come here what is your motive why what is that you want to perceive after this what do you want to do so what is summer internship so i just put it as a, as a course a normal course in a university where you are actually been uh, given an environment to work and and do some activity and uh, you know a lot of um, so some knowledge building you know thing happen and and it carries forward right so but there are no quizzes i i believe there are quizzes here yeah there are quizzes so it's like a small course a two months course so posing questions for answers so questions very important answers are not important actually uh, you must have come from a background where you feel that answers are the most important thing but answers are not important questions are important but of course you want to get answers from them that's why you you would like to pose and then you would like to build your own knowledge right slowly slowly it's a it's a very slow process it's not very fast so previous experiences always i mean have been you you just saw a course this is computer programming oh i want to register for that course then um, maybe discrete mathematics i want to register for this semester what make what makes you think that way do you talk to somebody or you don't talk or there are fixed set of courses which you take for semester right so you have to take but why you should be taking that but then you should you, you still must be talking to somebody right or you don't talk you are isolated or maybe your seniors would help you and say that oh this is this is important this is important so can you tell me which are the fundamental courses in computer science yeah discrete is no 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 finite automata is but slightly before finite automata yeah logic so that's where we are logic without logic none of these courses would have progressed to at level which you see there is always a logic when you write it, write an algorithm right some some uh, i don't know you have a logic course or you don't have a logic course or it is a part of discrete structures right discrete mathematics so that is not correct you should have a course on logic and here you have a course on logic it's called foundations of logic so there you have lots of you know tend to understand here and there and then you understand algorithms you don't know why you should be writing so those statements what are the reasons do you have assertion somewhere or you just write it for the sake of writing do you prove it somewhere i mean see these are all the things you know logic plays a major role when you want to actually prove an algorithm or any any programming um, say it's like a proof it's said that um, proof is a program actually one of the papers uh, talks about saying that proof is a program you have a proof you have a program but if you have a program you don't have a proof okay so let me go ahead what is star i'm i'm put star star is i think everybody knows wild character so i would ask what is what then so what is so whenever uh, so we say you know uh, uh, discrete mathematics this that 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 and then uh, how do we know what actually what 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 is what you must have learned when you were very small right not now when you are very small so how did you learn it 
Can you tell me the process? Yeah, somewhat right, but not very right. Curiosity. Uh, curiosity is uh, you're curious to know many things, but not about what. By understanding the pattern in which people answer, you know, that's how we learn learn what. Nobody taught us what is this. And if you see a dictionary meaning, I don't know how it would look like. Maybe inter interrogative way of asking a question or something like that. So, it's difficult to define, right? Anybody know about Gödel? Great mathematician. I may take two hours. Okay. First completeness theorem of G Gödel says, yes. um, it's difficult to define. Why is difficult to define? Everybody's knowledge is different and uh, maybe what you think about what could be different than what others would be thinking about what. That's also correct. But at least we should have some formal definition so that uh, our mind can actually feel that this is the boundary in which we are, you know, the boundary. So you may define your own boundary. So why it is difficult, you know, you have uh, language and then you have axioms. So I call what is an axiom here. So you have language and, and axioms on that language and you have theorems on that language, you have corollaries on that language, you have whatever lemmas. But when, when you, you have axioms with you, you can straight away prove the theorems. But you cannot prove the axioms of that language. You cannot prove. So for a language to define, it has to start with something. And those are assumptions and which are called as axioms. Like a point in geometry is, is an assumption. Without that, I don't think we would have reached at this point where people are doing so complex things, right? Just because of point line is extended and 3D and all those things, right? So you, so then what do we do? If, if I have a language L and I have axioms on that language and then I have theorems proving, not proving those axioms, theorem being proved using axioms, but I cannot prove these axioms. So what generally you should be doing is that you design another language which is a super language for this language. So L dash or higher language becomes a superset of this language. And then the axioms from here become theorems there. And then that language has got another, another those axioms. <laughs> so consider if you had, uh, uh, you had, if you had to start mathematics with line instead of a point, so line could have been called as an axiom and then you prove the remaining. But then if you want to have to prove a point, I mean you cannot prove a point, but if you want to prove a line, then you need another language which says there is a point which is assumed and then line follows from that, right? So language above language, so meta language. So somewhere there is a some sort of higher language through which we understand this, uh, the world. So, um, what, what, what is and what is, what is it not? Say if I, so moment you try to understand something, is it, uh, what is it, what is it, right? I can, I can, I can write a nice logical form, formula saying, everything which is there in this world is not this. So, you can be that precise. So, in a way you are trying to, confine your area, you know, you're shrinking, 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 when you want to, when you really understand what is it, it's not just a, what is a marker. So there's a lot of things inside and you know, so many things. Uh, maybe if you just un want to understand, it's just a marker, no. But something inside, something more, you know, so, so that knowledge keeps on growing slowly, slowly. So what is something and what is not something? Right, so I define this formula. Actually, the um, talk f has a very old history. Uh, somebody asked me what is what actually, and um, 
so I was not able to answer. So I, it took me around five to six months only to understand. And I did some work and I tried to merge uh, formal logic, I tried to merge uh, system dynamics, I tried to merge, you know, uh, algebra and I tried to merge uh, something which I don't remember. <laughs> okay, so, so I, I, I call these a fundamental axioms. So, do you say something weird? So, there were so yeah, six wives one husband. So, they used to fight continuously for something. So, the what wife would ask only what? Question, what, what, what? No why questions. So, why wife will ask only why question. Like this, all of them used to ask that question which they can ask. And they used to fight continuously until they re reach a point where they could understand something. Anyway, in, in towards the end, I have a quote saying why it's important. Um, like in the morning, Avina Shavate said that uh, don't listen to the idiot, listen to somebody who is much better, right? <laughs> so, we understand the meaning of what from this five W's and one H. Okay, so title is little scary, so I did not put this. It's an universal paradox. There's a paradox inside, it's circular oscillating and self-referential. So, I will uh, try to explain little, little about everything. So, if you take an example from uh, general algebra, uh, so if you say x square plus 1 equals 0 and x equals minus 1 by x, right? I can put it this way. Do you have any objection? So, if you put in a value of x as 1, you get minus 1. But if you put minus 1, you get 1. How is it possible? It's a paradox, imaginary, right? That's how we define, say, root of minus 1, i, right? Which is same as i. So, what is the value of x? Actually, it is root of minus 1, right? Imaginary. Now, what is imaginary? It is oscillating. Minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1. Okay, so, I am no, I am no, I did not discover an, anything like that, but I, I just tried to put some connections here and there. And uh, it comes from the first uh, uh, reference. See, I have put references everywhere. So, uh, the work is mine, but the ideas have come from somewhere. Okay? So, uh, these are, this, is, this is the way you should be giving credits to others. Yeah, so it's imaginary. So, now it's also circular because I am trying to refer the same thing again and again. So, from the answers, I, am, I try to get back to say what and from what I get answers. So, it's uh, circular. Um, one of the nice things to understand how circularity is defined is um, if, you, if you see uh, art of computer programming, have, has anybody read that book? You, the problem is that you don't know your fathers, <laughs> the great fathers. Uh, it's important. Sometimes history is very important. Without history, how can you survive? Little big. Okay. So, there are oscillations and uh, like root of minus 1, which is imaginary. C circular definition. This may not be at the same place, but with a big gap in between, some other definitions, some other index material will be there and then, so you also need to search what, where, what is there, you know. And uh, that's the way you can define, so easy. Do you, do you need any formal theory to define this? So easy, like that. So making things simple as possible is more important. So, see our mind cannot uh, visualize this, okay, so higher dimension words probably would be able to. So, generally you would, may study uh, 18 dimensions or 19 dimensions and then only maybe, yeah, there are people who study it above 9 dimensions, 
So I, what do I say is that I'm just trying to establish a connection. I is imaginary with real values. Okay, so phi and not of phi. Uh, do you understand phi? Phi, this phi, this is a formula. Phi, I can replace with anything. This is also a formula. I can replace with anything. It can be not, what, what and, okay, so. But you know, you can still not have this. It's impossible to have this. And it's still an open problem which may never be solved, okay. That's the ultimate, some other theory. So why paradoxes are important? You see there are, there's a paradox. You understand what is a paradox? This existing as well as this existing is a paradox, right? Uh, language of paradox says, we don't like it, but when presented in some forms like poems and all, so we do appreciate it. You know, we, our mind is very happy to appreciate something which is not possible in this world. So we like cartoons and you know, so many things, you know, science fiction and you know, many, many other things which we don't actually see and our mind likes it. And actually we are in that frame. So anyway, the, uh, you know, much of the things would have not happened in poetry if there was no contradictions like this. So paradoxes were not there in poems. Probably poetry, poems would have not reached a level where, where it is today also. So I can give you some nice ones. So our sweetest so songs are those that tell of saddest thought. Is it possible? No, literally uh, you will feel it is what you like. I mean, it's interesting to read, right? It makes you little happy. And the second one, you see, I come back to where I have never been. <laughs> like. Science fiction is above science fiction, I don't know. <laughs> Wordsworth, Westminster Bridge. So, so what I'm saying is that, so now probably it may look like a sermon, but um, pardon me if you don't like it, just uh, close your ears and you can go to sleep. <laughs> so, we are not evolved programmatically, but logically with some inferencing mechanism, we, you know, we try to infer, you know, and um, not uh, very much programmatically like the way we should say that. Um, so because it is not inherent is in us and then, um, you know, unless until uh, we have some basis, we don't go ahead and uh, accept things, but, but except in some cases where you, you are happy with paradoxes, it's okay, right? So it's hard to change. Um, so you need to understand. 6 W's and 1 H, right from the morning, 9, 9.30 onwards, I think the question uh, that you should be asking questions, uh, this and that, and then Avinash Avate came with why question, why, 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 so, so I am just trying to fill up the gaps, you know, so 6 W's and 1 H, so idea is that, you, you know, the questions um, tell you a lot of things actually, it's not about just asking questions for the sake of asking, but uh, it does tell you something uh, that you would like to, uh, you know, it's an art actually, articulation in some form wherein you would, uh, you are expressing yourself. So, uh, making you feel little more comfortable uh, asking something, right, rather than you just start doing things, you know, don't ask anybody. I mean, people will be little um, scared, right, uh, so it's always good to ask. Um, you know, something like that. So, you understand and, and my, my basic feeling is that you, you would understand those fundamental axioms if you do that and if you, you have been doing that. But somewhere you have stopped, like the curiosity somebody mentioned. Now the curiosity has, is not taking you anywhere. So, your curiosity is little weaker. So, I was in fact hoping that my energy would get lost by this time, 9, 5.30 now and 5, 6 o'clock. So, <laughs> So, so this is what you get, it's no different than doing any MTech thesis or <laughs> PhD thesis because every time you need to ask something. See, it's not like, you know, uh, I, 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 it's not like, you know, you keep on asking questions all, all the time, all the time. No, that's not good also. Then I think the people who are standing here would run away, right? So, some questions. Um, which are important and um, and it is not that you are not encouraged to ask 
those questions which are uh, which look little foolish also so you can ask you can ask but every time you ask the same question then uh, people may not like so so you have to think you know uh, so asking questions also to yourself not not maybe not to others but yourself and then finding out somewhere like you know curiosity that's curiosity so that's important actually so it's not different than doing your mtech thesis or you know so almost same and it won't be different if you have tomorrow you get married so fights will happen this will happen kid will be there and so kid will ask question if you don't ask question kid will ask question life will be interesting so you know get used to it now itself so this is the quotation in fact if i am a fool then somebody else is there to tell you that uh, but i am still quoting myself down <laughs> I keep six on a serving man. They taught me all I knew. Their names are what and why and when and how, how and where and who. Difficult to read also. So I'm, what I'm saying is that anything you do, you start. You can, simple exercise. I I didn't want to bore you with an algorithm and saying that now write an algorithm. Now again you write an algorithm. Now apply why why rule. Now apply what rule. You know. I didn't want to do that. It's nice, you know. You write something, somebody can read. Hundreds of people can read, but if you don't write anything, nobody will read. So how do you help? I mean, how do you take your knowledge somewhere? You don't write anything. And I believe that documentation is the most important thing, which is just the opposite of you know some lectures, uh, two lectures down. so for me in fact everything is important not only documentations and no not only documentation everything code is also important code should be beautiful not uh, somewhere hanging something you know that's not coding good style should be there everything should be pre- should be there you know like um, error error reporting messages these that it's not just a right algorithm is not a code right do you agree or not right you write everything without indentation it's as good as throwing in a dustbin so don't ever do that so it has to be uh, you have to spend time time comment should be there comment is also a documentation actually a type of documentation i don't know what would have happened if your uh, own uh, which which is your favorite book so take for example any book if if the fifth page was on the 50th page and some other page was in place of the fifth page and like this all the pages were jumbled up and kept somewhere how do you search how do you read it has to be written nicely right even you write on wiki i mean we have a wiki i'll show you why writing on wiki is important because somebody has to read it i mean if it is not readable you should not write it okay if you don't want to write it Then you should tell yourself that it is important. But anyway, writing is important. So this is success model. But I have defined it this way. So uh, if anybody has taken system dynamics course, uh, mostly offered in mechanical or I mean, just get offered many many places. Very here also in computer science you have a course. Um, so so it's just a diagram. It's easy to understand. Okay. So what do I say is that this is our what we want to achieve. You know. we are always but which is not achievable this and this both are both you know we want everything right but by doing this we try to understand and the meaning of what that is the phi you know or maybe why or something something like that so what is not just about what it's about some something right and um, so you can replace with anything it's not uh, this is not uh, very prominent uh, so all three things are the more, more, most important thing so work hard play and enjoy your daily life you should enjoy work hard and play somewhere so not just work hard work hard do your some computer 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 give me results give me results that's not that's not good so you know i i hear many people say i don't like mathematics have you heard i'll tell you why so work hard i'm working hard little little then only i understand then i like it then i like it then i work hard more like that so 
probably that person must have not worked hard, so he doesn't like it. Oh, sorry, he doesn't understand it. And then he doesn't understand it, he doesn't like it. Right, so it's as simple as that. So, but many people say, I like something. I'm very scared sometimes, you know, when people say, I like machine learning. Or when people, when people say, I like the computational geometry or something, something, something like that. So, in a way, so see, see, it's very important that you balance this, okay? So, you don't, you don't only keep on working hard so much. So much you work hard, okay, this is a back arrow, this is an arrow, this will cancel and this circle will not move properly. They are placed nicely, if you see, they will coincide and then, so you work hard, you play and you, un you enjoy. If, if you try to do something more, like if you only enjoy, then I think uh, other things will go for a toss. You will have to leave, uh, summer internship will be in trouble. You can enjoy in IIT Bombay for two, two, two months, right? Do they get the salary and stipend and everything without working? How to think critically? Okay, so all the time I'm talking about what, what and why and we must have got bored and um, I don't think we should, I should keep on doing the same thing. So I'm just deviating myself um, to think critically. So you can ask questions. You can really ask questions and you see this slide, this is not the slide uh, which is just put for the sake of putting but um, this is the very old slide and in fact uh, this has come from Polia. So you know if you read this, it is still applicable now in this, I think this book probably came in 1940s or 1920s, I don't remember, I have uh, 1988 here. Yeah. But he has been teaching for a long time, almost 30, 40 years and he developed this and he was a great, great mathematician. Okay, so um, the first thing that you need to do is to understand the problem. I'm just covering the left hand side and I will leave those things for you and uh, maybe you can uh, see. See, it's uh, very important. The first thing, you understand the problem, you know, problem. You don't understand the problem, you cannot do anything, right. So, why you are here is also a problem, right? I mean, what what do you have to do? And many of them do not know what they have to do. So, they are listening here and somebody is going to tell. And now this idiot is giving this type of lecture. So, <laughs> that's, that's also a problem. So, second, find the connection between the data and the unknown. So, there are three things in a problem. Any problem, so there is a data, there is an unknown in the problem, okay? And then there, there's a con condition on those on that problem. There are condition or conditions on that problem. That's that's it. That's a problem. Any problem. Say take for example sorting or something. Any any algorithm, any problem definition. You go and see. Any any of those. Uh, there are only three things: data, unknown, what what is to be found, and conditions on it. You don't have conditions. You don't have anything. You don't have data, you cannot do anything, right? And if you don't have unknown, you don't know what you are doing. That's a problem because you don't know what you are doing. You just have data, conditions, you don't know what to do, right? So they are, mostly those people are like lost somewhere. So they have to go to Lakeside, IIT Bombay and sit sometime there to understand what to do. So you may be obliged to consider auxiliary problems. That some, some, some problems have solved in some context, so you may want to see them and see how it is solved somewhere and can I apply here and is it fitting somewhere? If it is near not fitting somewhere, can I change the problem? Okay, these are all the configurations. In fact, in fact, this is not one, one way like this, it is actually iterative. Then only you can say that you have actually put your heart in solving that whatever it is, writing a code or anything, you know, not just written for the sake of writing, but you have put enough of your heart and, you know, whatever you say, curiosity, patience, whatever, whatever you have, you know, that much. So, you, it's iterating all the time, actually. It's, I mean, you, you I mean, uh, look at the unknown and try to think of a familiar problem having the same or similar unknown. Like, see, it's a very pattern matching type. So, anything which you have seen before, is the unknown same, is the condition very same, is the data 
somewhere I have used like this in solving some other problem. Can I use it here? Can I take another problem which is very looking very similar to this? Can I modify this problem and solve that problem uh, in such a way that that problem is going to affect this problem? Solve it some, some you know, tweak somewhere and then can I solve a bigger problem later? So all these things, you know, keep on thinking. So that's where, you know, what, why and, you know, how to do and all those things will come. Questions coming from inside. You know, can I do like this? Can I do like that? So every way. And it is always good to talk to people because something which are identified, maybe it is not the best sometimes. Generally, you would need to, this, I, I see people coming and saying, I got a great idea, you know, I got a great idea. This has never been done before. The person will come and sit and he tell me that this, 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 this. Oh, have you looked at something like this before? This was done in 1950. So, like that, you know. So, do not be ignorant. And always appreciate. I, I understand what, what you are thinking now is that if you come up with something today and if you, you want to claim that it is yours, it's good. But, Take a little efforts, you know, little efforts to go and check who has done what. And that's the only that's only possible if you ask experienced people. Experienced people will tell you. Okay. So then credit them, those who have done it already. Okay. I would not say that uh, you can still say that I have been able to do this, but it actually comes from here. That's the most important thing. That's how you learn. Not by saying, I have done everything. Credit, give it to them, those who deserve it. All, even, even if you are thought that this is the solution which I come up by not looking anywhere. But if you know from where it is come, you should give credit. And that's the most important thing. That's how, otherwise if you give credit to yourself, tomorrow you will say, I am champion, I am going everywhere, see, like this, like this, like this. Telling everybody, oh, you know how I solve this problem? Like this, like this, like this, like this. Like this, like this, like this, like this. So you will only do that. So the best thing is to give credits to others. Because you will get more inputs. Uh, steps for conducting research. So purpose, why you are doing it? You tell me. If you don't like, I mean, if you, if you say that uh, this is not the purpose of doing this, this project has to go in this direction, I am very happy. You can do that. So motivation, what do you mean by motivation? Motivation for the project is about examples which are available, readily available and you see an impact. If you do work in that area, it will have a good impact somewhere. That's motivation. You are motivating the project, the goals of the project. It's, it's a very important problem. You are trying to highlight it. You understand? <laughs> You're highlighting and saying it's very important. Look, there is no code and all. You don't write code in motivation. You write, I mean, if, of course, you want to solve a um, um, problem related to uh, uh, language, uh, C language or any of this semantics of the language, then you may have to motivate using some examples. So examples are important. Why this is the most important thing that you're doing? Okay. Review of existing literature sources with proper criticism. I, I am sure you must have seen a lot of at least 40 to 50 papers which have been put. Have you downloaded and read something? Those people who have opted for the FRG group, have you, have you read at least one? So you are supposed to read 50 papers and above and each paper is at least 14 to 20 pages. No, it's important. Okay, so we can do it very fast. Okay, I'll tell you how to go about. So that's not very important. But but the main thing is which is criticism is important. So where is the point? Why we should? I mean, why do? So out of fifty which I put there, only ten may qualify tomorrow. So you may have to read fifty or hundred, but only ten is to be taken. Not because you have read fifty. I have seen MTech students who actually they have read some um, at least 30, 30, 40 papers by the whole semester or two semesters and uh, they put it in their final um, uh, thesis 
just because they have read it, but there is no connection. So don't do that. That's not good. Then you have to tell them that this is not correct actually. Okay, so you 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 put only those which are important. Okay, problem identification and formulation. So proper problem needs to uh, to be identified. You have seen already. See, generally people forget. You know, people say I have I have this is my problem, but if you actually observe it, somewhere the condition is missing, somewhere the unknown is missing, and somewhere uh, data is also missing. So you know that's why that slide is important. Sometimes you take that slide, print out, and put it somewhere. Where you or maybe where you sleep or you know you just put it so that the morning you get up, do some exercise and uh, read. You know it's like a um, reading a Bible, <laughs> Bible for two two months. Problem identification and formulation. So um, it's very important that you formulate it properly. Putting forward specific and main research questions. What questions can you put? What are these different questions? Can you? Can you classify them in this different form? Can you say these are the questions, research questions in this category? In this category, probably this, in this category. Okay, after that, moving ahead and then you prove it. Okay, you just don't classify and keep it like that. So then devise a plan for solving. How do I solve it? Very naive way of solving. I don't I want any intelligent uh, way of uh, looking at the problem. So in, in initially you can say, okay, this is how it could be solved. Now can we do something slightly better? Slowly, 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 you arrive at a point. Now you say that this is, this looks, um, I mean, there must be some reason for arriving at a point. No, I don't think um, even insertion sort or any of those very simple ones I'll tell you insertion sort or even uh, binary search might have come after so many years of research not in one shot um, you you might be taking it for granted that that's binary sort that's insertion that's short uh, you know traveling salesman's problem oh, what's that that's nothing i know it <laughs> so it must have come after a lot of lot of lot of work and then you know, maybe a five years, six years, ten years, and then it has come in proper shape, and then it has come to your, uh, you know, that um, textbooks like um, Corman or whatever. So it's important that you do it that way, rather than plain saying that I am going to use this algorithm, that algorithm. So any algorithm that you are reading from those papers or anywhere that you find, okay, I'll, I'll give you a list of resources from where you would find, um, where you are supposed to look at. Okay, there is no one resource that is important. There are many other resources which are important. Okay, not only the papers. So, and then um, critical analysis of the problem, giving various solutions to the problems identified. Almost uh, case study along with possible data collection. So, um, you have a case to be. The case study is something like some case, like you know, scenario or somewhere. You know, in some setting. Uh, such a problem needs to be addressed and for such a problem this data um, may be required you know and then you go and collect that data from somewhere so you need to find where you could get such a data for example if you are doing something on gene gene uh, sequencing or you know in the hu like a human genome human, uh, genome project so there you will actually go and hunt for the human data no the a t c g and all those things right so where is the, where is the source you are not going to write a very pat uh, t uh, ten uh, ten character gene. <laughs> is that going to work? Just just a ten character A T C G over. This is my program. This is my A T C G G, and this is my output. That's not good enough. Real data from where such uh, I mean such a data is available. Data is available now. Open. You know, U.S. government at least has pro have provided. Um, much of their uh, data in the public, so you can get data wherever you feel it is important. Even I think in Indian uh, scenario, I mean it should be available in certain cases. Available. Wikipedia is available, free, right? So demonstrating the and then case study with possible. Okay, uh, demonstrating the research work. So you need to demonstrate, you need to show somebody has to feel that what you have done is useful. Right. Not, not just saying, okay, this is my output, this is my input, uh, over, no, no, there must be some flow, why, uh, how do you arrive at this point, okay, so you need to break it properly. Proper documentation and future recommendations, that means you just don't leave it, 
um, saying that this is my work and it is over. The future, what is the possibility in the future? Somebody can look into it. So that means by creating something, you are giving ideas to other people who may be in a position to think on those lines. So future work is always important and of course conclusion that you generally do, but future work is very important because your time and energy that you are spent in doing something, if there is no future scope, then nobody, nobody will, you know, people have to go through your report again and again and again, they will have to coin their own future work and like that. So, it's good that you show that this is important and this has not been tackled before. So, this is and this is at this stage very difficult, you know, that complexity. So, how difficult is it? You need to state. So, future is, I mean, future recommendations very important. Clean cut presentations for layman to understand. <laughs> so, no jargons, okay, very simple presentation. Present, presentation has to be uh, I should be understood by almost everybody. Okay, so that is why it's very important. So, so these are these are literature sources. So, uh, you know, you can take from research papers, uh, journals available, conference proceedings, technical reports, uh, B Tech, M Tech, PhD thesis. Okay. If PhD thesis is probably mostly 150 pages, so you may have to read the whole thesis. Not everything, but something which is important. You don't read everything, okay, when you read a paper. So, monographs generally uh, like art of computer programming is a monograph. I think two, three decades, uh, none of the books are like that type, you know. In the, so, it was like a Bible before. Before the Corman and all these things are not available. So, people were using that as a Bible. And these are the monographs where everything you will find, whatever you want to do. Uh, so, renowned books, of course, good ones like Corman. Then white papers. White papers are generally coming from products or something like that, you know, companies. So, they have, uh, they write something, but they don't disclose everything. So, don't get, um, you know, read it, read it, it's important. And then software documentation, somewhere documentation is available for a software, you should read it. Okay, so don't neglect. Okay, user manuals very important sometimes. Sometimes you feel user manuals are useless. It's not correct because by just reading an user manual and if you have, uh, if it is nicely written, um, maybe people like her who write so nicely, then you can understand the inside functionality in no time. Okay, so user documentation is. User manuals are very important. You don't even have to see the code. You will understand what is where, okay, almost to some extent. Like how you understand Microsoft Office and you know, now I think you understand. If you know computer science principles, you know, the strong foundations in computer science, then I think you can build Word and anything like that. So that's not very difficult. But uh, that's how you understand, no? So after going here, it does this, it does this, how does it do? Oh, so some questions ring in your mind. So, websites, of course, many websites are there, you need to choose which, which one of those are going to help you. And of course, a dictionary is important. <laughs> I have 15 dictionaries. <laughs> Newsletters, uh, magazines, newspapers also, keep track, um, buy newspapers sometimes, okay, outside available in the market. So, finally, it's very important that I give this phrase because generally people hear and forget, but if they see, they remember, and if they do something, they understand. So that's a Chinese phrase. I think I'm not finished, my, this is my second and first talk. So these are my references for this talk. So the whole talk is um, based on uh, five, uh, that is uh, Russell. My whole philosophy for this talk is he was in imprisonment for almost 10 years or something during that time, in 1918, very old. And he wrote this in the prison actually. And that tells you the struggle, struggle that he had in you know, the roads to freedom. You can read it sometimes. <laughs>